Hey, Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, and in this edition of Nerd's Guide to the Galaxy, we're talking about how to clear old, uncleared transactions from your bank reconciliations in QuickBooks Online. This is something that I encounter a lot when I've taken over a new client's set of books, and I'm kind of confirming all the reconciliations, and I will frequently see, even when the books are reconciled properly, that the one thing that's that's often overlooked are these old transactions that never cleared and should have cleared by now, and by leaving them in there, you're really skewing what your balances are in your bank accounts or credit card accounts, according to the register in QuickBooks Online. It makes it unreliable. So it's important to clean this up, especially if you haven't ever done it or haven't done it in a really long time. Clean up all the old stuff and then make it part of your monthly reconciliation process to do exactly what I'm going to show you here. I'm going to show you how to create the report and we're going to memorize that report so that, again, it's just another click in the reconciliation process once you've reconciled to confirm that there isn't anything old that should have cleared by now that we need to address. So let's go to my screen and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So over here, I'm in a QuickBooks Online. I'm in my Bulletproof Bookkeeping Sample Company. We're going to go to Reports. And I'll just run a standard balance sheet. And important to note, when you're running the balance sheet, look at the date range because it may not matter for the purposes of looking at the balance sheet on the surface because it's cumulative. But before you drill into any balances, which is what we're about to do, whatever date range you're showing here is going to sort of dictate the date range that you'll be looking at when you drill in and look at that detail report. So I want to go into my Wells Fargo 3051 account here, or maybe we should do the, the one that's got the bigger balance in it, right? Sometimes when I'm doing this, I like to tackle the one with the bigger balance first. Um, but let's just pick on the 3051. It doesn't matter. You need to do this for all of them. And when I click in, sure enough, it's just giving me the custom date range based on what I had shown in the balance sheet. So for this report, we want all dates. We want to look at any transactions all of time that never cleared, okay? And theoretically, we should only see current transactions in that. So if I switch this to all dates, and then we'll go to customize here, because now I also want to filter it for only uncleared items, okay? So let's hit the filter option, and we're going to look for cleared. Now, if you're not familiar with this dialog, uh, be prepared. As soon as I check this off, it's going to fly away, <laughs> right? First time I ever did it, I was like, whoa, what happened? Where'd it go, right? It, it throws it up to the top here so that you can focus on the things that you've selected to be filtered. And so over here, we're going to say, I want to filter it for anything that's not cleared. And then I'll run report. And let's close the sidebar just for a little bit more screen real estate. And so we can start to see, now this is a sample company with a lot of old data in it. But let's just say this was a current company. Clearly, we shouldn't be seeing transactions from 2019 in here, right? So the first thing we'll want to do is save the customization, right? Give it a name, call it uncleared. And remember, you have to do this each separately for each bank account. So you might want to title it accordingly. Like I might call this uncleared wells 3051. And once you've done that, and I've actually already done it, so I'll show you where to go to find it. But once you save it, you'll find it in custom reports. You'll see here I have uncleared wells 3051. Now, what to do? I can't just void transactions. So let's let's take this first one as an example. JetBlue Airlines, you know, if I paid for airfare um, in 2019, $750, that should have definitely cleared by now. There's no way JetBlue would have let me on the plane without having actually paid for the ticket. So there could be a number of reasons this could happen. Most common uh, situation is it got recorded twice somehow. In one case, I reconciled the transaction because I reconciled it against what cleared the bank, which was just the one time. And somehow we got a duplicate in there that never cleared, right? So the first thing I'd want to do is research what exactly happened. Did this ever really clear? Did it not ever clear? I might be inclined to go pull my April 2019 bank statement just to confirm, does JetBlue Airlines show up for $750? If it does, great. Then I want to go look in the register, right? So let's go to the register for this account. And I'm going to duplicate my tab so I can kind of keep my place. This report is like my checklist of what I need to go through. So let's go over to the chart of accounts. And I'll go into the Wells 3051. We'll go view register. And these filters are great. The register filters. Let's filter it for the date range. Now, again, I recorded it on, uh, what was the date? The 1st, right? April 1st. 
So let's set the date range somewhere around that because we don't know that that's the actual date that it cleared. Sometimes it could be off by a few days. So let's say we'll go from uh, 03, 25, 19 through 04. Um, we said it was the first 10, 19, right? Now it doesn't like my date because the register date filters don't technically want to let you go back that far. Let's click 2019. See how it's all grayed out. So, and that is a new-ish thing that QuickBooks is doing, um, but somehow seems to have worked, right? So I'd look in here and I see the 750. Let's go back into my filters. I'm not sure if this is actually working or not. It looks like this is all stricken out. Oddly, there are some days that don't look like they're stricken out, but I think they actually are. Anyway, the point being, you go back into the register. If you can't use the filters, because of what I just ran into, a little weird, um, I'll just flip this date sorting to go back to the oldest transactions. In this case, the whole of it only goes back to like 2018. What I'm getting at though, is you wanna go into the register and find that you know, timeline and see, did, did it only, get recorded once or did it get recorded twice? Because if it only got recorded once, then there's a question, how did it get in here and never actually clear the bank, right? Raises some other questions. So I'm just gonna scroll down in the register feed until we can find that $750 that never cleared and see if there's another one that shows up that did, right? So here we are already in that time range. And so in this case, because of the sample company nature of things, it looks like it's only been reconciled through uh, January of 2018. But what we would be looking for is we see this 750 here that's not cleared. So at this point, the next thing to do would be to actually reconcile the bank account and catch up on the reconciliations because in this case, very likely, we would find that this was on the bank statement and it cleared, right? So that would be the answer to this question. So in a case like this, I would stop right here and say, hey, we need to grab all the statements and catch up on the reconciliations. But assuming it were reconciled and we looked in and we saw that bottom line, this was an erroneous transaction and it needs to be reversed. Since this is from 2019, which presumably would be a closed period by now, I can't just void it, right? Because that would change the books prior to the closing date. So what I would need to do is put an entry in the current year, right? And this is, uh, it was booked against travel and transportation. So what I'd probably do is just record a deposit, let's say January 1 of this year, Right, 010123, book it against travel and transportation, uh, 750. And then, of course, you want to put in a detailed memo received from would be JetBlue. And then reverse old uncleared transaction. And what I'd want to do here is put in the details as much as possible so that if I'm looking at this later on and I don't remember what I did or somebody else is looking at it and they have no idea what I did, ideally, perfect world, what I like to do is take the URL of the original transaction. Notice it's got a transaction ID. So this URL is very specific and unique to this transaction uh, from 2019. And I'll put a little pipe in there to create like a separator and I'll paste in that URL. Now, this is not gonna show up as a hyperlink, right? I'm gonna, uh, there's no option to just save, so I'll say save and close, and then we'll jump back in. Okay, so magnifying glass to get to recent transactions. There's my deposit. Okay, this isn't, let me close the other tab. You know, this isn't a link I can click on, but I can certainly copy and paste, right? So now if I, open up a new tab. So this creates a nice clear trail of breadcrumbs, so to speak, so that anybody else, including myself later on when I have no recollection of this, can follow that trail of breadcrumbs and look at this and understand, okay, this is from 2019. The description explains it pretty well. It says it's an old uncleared transaction. We're reversing. The deposit will go against the expense. The next time we reconcile, we'll be able to check these two transactions off against one another. They will zero out. They will not impact the reconciled balance, and it will get the old stuff cleared up out of and off of the books. And the moral of the story on this is you would have to go through each of the transactions that show up on this report one by one confirming what needs to be done about that particular transaction. So to recap real quick, again, step one, make sure all your reconciliations are completely up to date. Step two, run the uncleared transactions report 
and look for anything old that should have cleared by now. And then that was step three. And step four is um, then go through the old transactions one by one to confirm what happened. If it was a payment we made to somebody, say a contractor that never cleared, we might want to follow up with them and say, hey, did you? I, and trust me, I've had this happen where um, my clients have contractors who literally keep checks in their desk drawer. And they per that's their savings plan is they wait and don't deposit the check. So sometimes that will come up. That'll happen. So you won't want to avoid a transaction like that. What you'll want to do is encourage them, look, please deposit these checks. The check is technically only good for a year, although most of us know by now that the banks pay no attention to that. I've had plenty of people cash checks that were years old and the bank still honored them and cashed them. So um, don't assume just because there's that little, uh, you know, expires after note on the check itself. No, nobody pays attention to that. But again... Bottom line, you'll want to go through these transactions one by one and confirm what, if anything, needs to be done about them. If it legitimately should be out there outstanding for some reason, fine, make that note, right? But in most cases, especially these days, these transactions should clear very quickly. So it would be a very rare case unless we've actually, like I said, you know, printed a check that the recipient simply hasn't cashed yet. So one by one, clear these up, confirm them, and then make this part of your monthly reconciliation process so that going forward all the time, your books are that much more bulletproof because there's nothing old that really represents a sort of skewing of your register balance because it's it's either reducing or, or, or falsely increasing your bank balance based on a deposit or an expense that's in there that shouldn't exist because it's something that's just never going to clear. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. As always, I hope you learned something here. Hope you had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you in the galaxy.